This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime. Welcome. Online fashion is a big deal in India in more ways than one. It is, of course, very sought after. Demand for it is only increasing. And there are reports that suggest that in the next couple of years, online fashion industry is only going to double, if not triple. Of course, uh, has also made headlines this year with the Flipkart acquiring Jabong, which now means that two of India's leading online apparel labels, Mintra and Jabong, are now firmly in the Flipkart stable. But of course, competition also getting intense with Amazon eyeing this space closely. What better time, we thought, uh, but to get Anant Narayanan, the CEO of Mintra and Jabong, to talk to us on the program. Thanks so much, Mr. Narayanan, for, for speaking to us. I know that uh, you've been very busy, which is why we haven't managed to set this up earlier. But, you know, going back uh, to the acquisition of Jabong. How's that going? How has the transition been in, in, in every such acquisition that are usually some teething troubles? Is all that behind you? So it's been very good. Uh, look, uh, what we've focused on, by the way, is that uh, Jabong, we're really focusing on consumer experience and we're focusing on how do we actually get the unit economics right and just the consumer experience to be better for customers at Jabong. It's a great brand, has a very loyal following. Uh, the other thing we've done, by the way, is uh, we've started using eCart uh, as well for supply chain and logistics so that the consumer experience gets better. Uh, so it's been a great few months. Now you've got Mintra, you've got Jabong. There was some buzz that there would be a merger. That hasn't happened. So what is it like, what is it like to sort of run them simultaneously? I think a, a couple of things. One is, of course, just the travel. I think Jabong is in Delhi and Mintra is in Bangalore. So I try sort of, I, I go back right. a bit to my consulting lifestyle where I'm actually traveling back and forth. So that's been a bit of a challenge. But actually, the team at Jabong has been fantastic. Uh, they're a very strong team, so it's actually worked well. Uh, I think we've put in place a set of governance processes at, um, at uh, Jabong as well, which actually helps me because we have a couple of review forums where I can really be a part of. Uh, and I use technology, so I, I do a lot of video conferences. Right. So we're not merging the two. I think they're two very distinct brands. They have very different loyal customer bases. Uh, actually, the customer overlap, by the way, is less than 30%. So it's actually, there is not a lot of overlap in customers. Um, now, that said, by the way, we do think often about how do we leverage synergies from each other? How do we leverage capabilities of each other, right? Whether it's technology, whether it's supply chain, whatever else, and that we'll continue to do, right? We're still pretty small. You know, this year will be a billion dollars. So I think there's a lot of opportunity to grow. So we're really focused on how do we capture the opportunity, not so much on integrating the two businesses. And, and what are the finances looking like? What about the need uh, for big investments to make sure that both of these uh, both of these products that you have, both Mintra and Jabong, deliver and are in line with expectations that you have? We decided to acquire it. It was very clear about the acquisition cost and the ongoing investment that was needed to continue to build Jabong up. So I think we planned for that from the very beginning, so there's no issue. I think it's running well. We're growing. Um, I think, look, Mintra is growing almost by 80% year on year for this quarter. Uh, I think Jabong, as I said, we're stabilizing first consumer experience and then we'll start to grow. Talking about expectations, just a, a quick question. There's, of course, also another buzz, which is about Walmart's interest in Flipkart. At this stage, can you confirm any of that for us? So I think, look, I don't respond to speculative comments. So I don't really want to comment on it at all, uh, actually. Okay. Right. Now, you know, you've got Mintra, you've got Jibong. Many would say that, you know, you have yep. a certain edge. But there is, again, Amazon snapping at your heels, as it were. Online fashion is something they're looking at very closely. So how do you see the competition vis-a-vis -vis Amazon in particular? So look, I mean, at some level, uh, if you just take fashion and lifestyle, which is the space that I'm familiar in, so I'll just talk about Mintra and Japong. But fashion and lifestyle, I think, is a very large space. It's the second largest space in the market. Uh, that said, by the way, I think it's only 2% penetrated online. That will likely go to 10%, 12%. If you take mobile phones, that's 30%, right? So this is a market that's getting made, and it's a market that will grow. So what I'm really focused on with Mintra and Jabong is we're both vertical players. We actually allow people to browse for things as opposed to search for things. Uh, it's also, we're very fashion specific and lifestyle specific player. Uh, and so we're focused on getting our consumer experience better. Don't focus so much on competitors, 
focus much more on our customers and say how can we provide the best experience that we can for our customers, how do we provide exclusive brands for our customers, and how do we partner up with our brand partners. So I think that's really been the focus, quite honestly, uh, not so much competition. So I think people play in various segments. There's enough and more room. The real thing is to grow the market, not necessarily sort of look at it as competition. Uh, that said, by the way, I think if I look at Mintra, what I do want to comment about is we actually believe in three things that I think are incredibly important. We mix content and commerce seamlessly. So, you know, actually content stories, we have something like a Facebook feed, which is the endless feed where you actually have a lot of stories coming through. And we believe combining content and commerce is the new way of selling fashion. So we're doing a lot of it. Second, by the way, we do incredible amounts of personalization. Right. So we have 10 million monthly active users. And for each of those users, we actually have a profile and we actually say, what do they see? The, min the Mintra that they see, the mantra that you see, the mantra that I see will all be different based on personalization. So we already do a lot of it. And we're very excited by it, and that's why I think our customers love us. A recent Google report actually said that the online fashion market will grow to around $35 billion by 2020. Are you sort of all, all geared up? How sure. do you see these figures? And are we here in India prepared for the scale? Uh, first is, by the way, a lot of sales come from tier two, tier three cities where there are no malls, so there is no retail productivity. But what's happened is there's lots of information and people are aware of brands. So this provides them the reach. Uh, second is, by the way, India has been a very unbranded market so far. And what this allows is for brands to get formed online. As you know, even Mintra has a set of private brands which have grown and scaled exponentially. And that's because we have consumer data and we have online distribution, right? So using that, you can build up a lot of brands. And so uh, I think the market projections are not off. I think this market is getting created. The pace at which the market creation happens, by the way, is, doesn't happen automatically. Players like us, like Mintra and Jabong and Flipkart, actually really create this market, right? So the pace of creation really depends on how well we do. Mintra has always historically been, in, you know, even before DIPP regulations, all the rest, we've been focused on profitability. I think I've spoken at NDTV about profitability and saying how do we get to profitability. We want to get to as much of the growth as we possibly can, north of 40%. So why would we not capture it? I think we're well positioned. We have terrific brands. We have a great reputation with our customers. Our customers enjoy shopping with us, so we should capture as much of the growth as we possibly can. Right, and of course, we are in the middle of the festive season. How is that coming along, uh, living up to all the expectations that you had in mind? Sure. So, um, look, festive has always been our biggest season for Mintra, right? If you look at the, uh, the, at the financial year, the first six months are always slower than the next six months. So we're entering a festive period. By the way, this is the year where we've entered the festive period most strongly. We have the most number of brands that are exclusive to us. We, our private labels are doing incredibly well. So I'm very bullish about this festive season. Um, uh, in terms of what happens, so we actually partner up with our brand partners, and our brand partners are the ones that drive growth and provide the discounts. Uh, I think, by the way, the way I think about it is what value can you provide your customers? So if you provide more exclusive collections, you provide new selection that's not available anywhere else, then that's what substitutes the value that you get instead of a discount. And that drives sales still. The rest of the festive season, we have very interesting uh, things lined up for our customers, from new brands that are getting launched uh, to a lot of exclusive collections from existing brands. One of our private brands, All About You with Deepika Padukone, actually has uh, a very interesting set of collections coming up in Ethnic, which should do very well. So generally, by the way, Ethnic will scale well uh, before Diwali, and I think we're excited about it. We're pretty strong there. And then I think all through November and December, we're expecting growth to happen through then the Shadi and then, you know, uh, the Christmas and holiday break. So, um, you know, I think we'll do much better. I think I'm expecting, by the way, about a 90% year-on-year growth, just to give you a number. Now, Jabong wasn't your only acquisition this year. There's also been Ritik Roshan's private brand, HRX, and a content aggregator as well. So how is all of that coming together and sort of... Uh, how much of this is yep. as per strategy and how much are you sort of yep. like playing by year and seeing how things evolve and then taking these key decisions? Yep. So it's a great question. I think look, we look for acquisitions for a reason. We don't do acquisitions for the sake of acquisitions. We look for uh, you know, gaps in technology that we can actually get to and, and see if that works. We look for um, you know, customer acquisition potentially. Uh, we look for brands and because, because we believe brands are the future and we can help build online brands. So we continue to scan the market, and there will be more, but we look to plug certain gaps, whether it's technology, whether it's brands or customers. My own sense is we're not going to do any more acquisitions for customers, because I think with Mintra and Jabong, that's pretty large. But we continue to look for 
technology acquisitions, we continue to look for brands we can invest in and grow. Right. We have a couple of different things going, by the way. Um, one which is quite interesting, which most people don't talk about, is what we have what's called the Mintra Fashion Incubator. Right? We started that about a year ago. It's to actually incubate new brands. So, you know, hundreds of people actually apply. We actually have a committee that selects the five, top five or seven. They then work a whole year with us and create a brand. And then they, they, they work, and, if, and, and then they're actually feel they can take that brand, sell it elsewhere, sell it on Mintra, et cetera, right? So it's our way, if you will, of giving back to the ecosystem. And it's actually a fantastic way to actually spot talent. It's a fantastic way to build brands. So that's one area. The other is Mintra has always had uh, an innovation culture. So we have a small group of people that continue to say what's the next frontier of innovation that actually happens. So, you know, we actually think about how do we predict, how do we not use designers but still design new clothes? How do we use data and AI to actually design clothes? And that experiment, we have a brand, by the way, if you go on an app called Moda Rapido, which is not designed by designers, it's designed actually by AI. And that's actually interesting. So I think we do lots of these things. I think we, spur, we, we work on the ecosystem, we work inside. Innovation and being clever about what we do has always been important. Because at some level, Mintra is a vertical player, as is Jabong. And so we'll always be smaller. So the key is to actually continue to innovate and do things differently um, so that we can actually punch above our weight. You know, two years ago, Mintra had also talked about opening offline stores. Is that still on the table? Is that something that you could still end up doing? Yeah, so uh, yes. I think you need to be clear about why you open offline stores. I think we open offline stores because I think a big part of the fashion experience is touch and feel. Uh, and so we use it more as marketing rather than sales. So our majority sales are always going to come from online channels, always, right? So offline will always be a small portion of it. That said, we are opening an offline store. I think, you know, you right. can expect more details, but I think it's going to be very non-traditional as a store. It's going to be completely tech-enabled. I think uh, hopefully we're going to use lots of new technology, including virtual reality, so people are going to be blown away coming to our store. So, you know, more news on that soon, but I think, you know, before the end of this year, hopefully we should have a store up and running.